At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So right now I'm in Conroe, Texas with Catalia. Hey, hey guys, it's Catalia. If you guys aren't tuning into her channel, you guys really need to. I'm gonna put her link in the description below, but right now we're gonna go check out the Herps Conroe Reptile Expo. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles and I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. All right, let's do this thing. All right, let's go. So what are you most looking forward to seeing here? I always want lychees. Everything lychee. My whole life is lychee. So we should probably look at Carl's table. Uh, anyone who watches my videos knows Carl. Um, and he always has tons of lychees that I want but I can't afford. So let's look at them and wish I could get them. Awesome. All right, so we're going to go look at Carl's table with his awesome lychees. Yeah. I kind of like lychees. I've seen a few of them around. <laughs> Just a couple. So how long have you been working with these geckos? Almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. Yes. Gotcha. He's a gecko veteran. You're a gecko veteran. So, this one from Moro, obviously, you know, I've been to Moro, I've been to that island. They look so different in the wild than they do in, in, in our captive ones. Right. They're, they are probably more fixed, so I mean, yeah. you know, how they look from certain localities, they can look right. so different. Well, look at the colors coming through in this one. Right. We didn't see that in wild specimens, but I like these better actually than the wild ones that we found. You find some localities that have a little more color you tend to put together to intensify that. Effect. Yeah. Cool, all right. Well, should we mosey? Yeah, let's go. All right. Thanks for showing your stuff. Have a great show. Thank you. Yellow-bellied pied female. That's one on my target list. Tell me it's the $500 one. Ah, nope. oh, man. So in a yellow belly pied, you look for this kind of pixelation. Yeah, it's the, uh, all the stippling yep. that pops out around them. Yep. And then typically it's the pattern in the color too. Yeah, so much darker pattern in a yellow belly pied than in a normal pied. And the pixelation along the edges of the color is one of the diagnostic features of a yellow belly pie, but that is a beautiful snake. All right, this one might be coming home with me. Do it! I'm gonna do it! Oh, I'm doing it! I'm doing it! <laughs> okay. All right. So one of the things that I love about this show is all the venomous stuff. What do you think? I love the venomous. I just wish you could hold them, but you can't. So Cat has found a snake that she wants. White. Speckled rattlesnake. <laughs> that is beauteous. Okay, they have timber. They have a timber in that. Room. 
Do they really? Yeah, the uh, exotic presentation or whatever, they have like a bunch of venomous that are endangered and stuff. Let us go check that out. Let's go look right now. Absolutely. Let's go. That is gorgeous. Gorge, absolutely gorge. <laughs> so this is a river river river. All right, Rattler, so it's day two here at Herb's Conroe. I've got my McDonald's coffee. I'm kind of dragging it from herping last night, but you know what? It's a good kind of dragging it. But today I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna check out some of the really cool herps here and the really cool herpers that are here as well. Good morning. Good morning. Catalia is sporting the flannel ensemble with the mustard yellow tank underneath and the black cutoff shorts. Vintage. Vintage and perfectly suited for an afternoon here at Herb's Conroe. <laughs> All right, so you produced this gecko? I did not produce it, but I got it from Sarah. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Um, Look at that. Fantastic. Wow, that's a good looking gargoyle. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna figure out the gender of this gargoyle gecko for cat here. All right, so kind of walk us through what the process is So here. pretty much if you can get like a flat, flat surface. Do you need help? Yeah. Sort of push them against it so they stop moving. Okay, like and you, that. Yep, and you look for the pores up in here yeah. and a little bit of the, the bulge right there at the bottom. Okay, so you take a black light there. Actually, the wrong one, I want the white one. So look at those pores coming through there. You're seeing pores there, so that means that's a male. And you wanted a female, didn't you? You sound like you were banging at the moon there. Check this guy out. This is an Eastern Indigo snake. This is one of my favorite all-time snakes, even though they do kind of finger paint with their poop. But this is North America's largest non-venomous snake. Look at how big this guy is. Oh man, he is just beautiful. They're called indigo snake because of that nice little shiny iridescence that they have on them. This snake is $1,800. Comment below if I should get them. $1,800 is like a trip to Australia, so indigo Australia. Indigo Australia. Comment below and let me know what I should do. Just a beautiful snake. All right, um, I've got to give them back. So Jason Royer is here from Royer Reptiles. You guys may re All right, so Jason Royer is here from Royal Reptiles. You guys may remember in the first season, four years ago when I started this channel, he was one of the first videos I did. So I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna talk to Jason and see what awesome ball pythons he's got. All right, Jason Royer. Yeah, that's me. This has immediately caught my eye. Let's take a look at that one. Sure, let's pop him open. <laughs> oh, look at that. Let's see, freak your head up, buddy. Yeah, this guy's been a really good breeder for us. But right now he just wants to be shy. Really creamy. We mixed him in with some vanilla stuff back in the day because of how creamy he was. It's really nice, man. Yeah. I don't know if he's got something else going on, but yeah, just killer bee clown who doesn't really want to be in the camera eye. Yeah, apparently. yeah, he's really shy, isn't he? Yeah. But look at this bleached out pattern going on here. Yeah, look he's at actually, that. he's a 2013, so he's got a little age to him. 2013, five so five years old. Five years old and you know, he's still, See if we can spread out a little bit for you. So a killer bee clown five years ago would have run you uh, what? You really want me to tell you? I want you to tell me. Uh, I got a really good deal on him and he was, in, he was still $5,000. $5,000. So yep. this snake, which is now nine fifty dollars here. Killer breeder, yeah. Was five, 5, 5000 five years ago. Tight. That's not bad. They're, you know. Well, we made a ton of babies with them. Yeah. Back some stuff. Yeah. So, so you uh, really. Yeah. That was a I'm, good investment for you. I'm not sad at all. Absolutely. Yeah, we got some really nice stuff built back there. Cool, cool. So Orange Dream, it, when it goes with the clown, it's really subtle, but it does it does clean it up real nice. And um, pastel, these guys also got pastel in them, so 
it kind of it's kind of a little dirty look to the to the orange dream but when you add blade in there it's just a really really clean yeah, absolutely it kind of it kind of cleans the pastel clown up because those kind of muddy up a little bit i think as they get older but the orange dream definitely helps it if right. you add fire to that too it's it's just really really nice yeah i don't know if the camera's picking it up in this light but that is just pumpkin orange right there and this guy you kind of see when you start to add the fire in the orange dream this is not a clown this guy's heck clown these guys are brothers but I mean, if you can see it in the camera, that how how creamy that is. This guy is a is an orange dream fire spider pastel Mojave 100% heck clown. So he's got a lot of stuff going on. So you got the fire, which is is basically a light a lightening gene. Yes. It lightens up the pattern. Makes things nice and creamy. Right. And you got spider, and you got Mojave, and you've got orange dream in this. Yes. So if we compare these two, look at how much the orange comes out in this. Yes, absolutely. If you add, if you took fire and you could add fire to this. Man, this thing would really pop. Really, really pop. Yeah, Man, that, is that is We're gorgeous. That is gorgeous. All right, Rattler. So, as you guys know, I am huge into pied. So, check this one out. So, this guy, this was 10 years in the making. Um, I mean, you see albino pieds. They're 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 common. They're all over now. So, but we we worked from a pied and an albino. Made the double heads. Kept raising everything up. Finally, we we're able to make a black pastel double head. And then uh, eventually, we hit on this guy. So, this is a black pastel albino pied. And you can really see what the black pastel is doing to it. Uh, albino, it tends to kind of lighten up and yellow up as it gets older. This guy's really hold, holding his orange nice. The the pattern in here, it's it's real smooth. Like when you look at a black pastel pipe, yep. it does this thing. It keeps it nice and smooth, kind of even colors. Usually they're more high white when they're black pastel, and you just right. got that going on. And then the head, the, the head as well. The, just the white on the head, it's just it's it's a lot more interesting to me than just your regular albino pied. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. So generally speaking, when you have a black pastel or a cinnamon pied, come on buddy. You basically just have the head pattern and a little spot on the tail. The rest of the snake is all white. But then when you add that albino gene, it really puts the pattern back on the snake like that. This is an amazing snake. All right, Rattler, so I want to hear from you guys. What is your favorite pied morph? Is it a albino black pastel pied? Is it a pastel pied? Is it the lavender pied, which is called the dreamsicle? Comment below and let me know what your favorite pied morph is. All right, brother, it is great to see you as always. You have some amazing stuff. I've got to get down to your place, do a little herping, and do a follow-up on Jason Royer Thank Reptiles. You. Thank you so much. All right, have a good buddy. show. See you soon. The Dragon Whisperer, all right. So you have some amazing bearded dragons here. Look at this guy. So this is a female, hypo trans. Uh, she's about eight months old. Um, beautiful girl. We plan on breeding her next year to probably another one of our red males. And uh, hopefully we'll produce some more of these great babies that we have over here. Yeah, look at this. These guys have great red. A lot of these are in shed. They're still kind of young, but uh, we really uh, kind of pride ourselves on the bars and stripes and great color. So another female that we have here, one of our future breeders, we haven't bred her yet. She's a hypo trans leatherback citrus. A uh, beautiful girl. She's about 10 months old. So we plan on getting to her probably next year. Uh, but again, we got, uh, in, in fact, this male down here, we plan to cross these two whenever uh, they're of age. And so this guy is probably gonna be boyfriend for a girl. She's a hypo pet trans citrus uh, with normal scales and also has a beautiful blue barring. And so this combination should make some incredible babies. How long have you been working with these dragons? Been working with them for several years. Uh, it started out, I'm a middle school science teacher. Oh, very nice. And uh, we got one as a pet for our classroom and I knew nothing about them. And so we started researching about the dragons and fell in love with them. Love the genetics, love working with the genetics. And uh, so it has really become a passion for us. Thank you, man. Great meeting you. Love the story and love the dragons. All right, have a good show. What did you get? Thousand crickets. Oh, you have a thousand pet crickets now. 
They smell so good. All right, Rattler, so that's the end of the show. Everybody is packing up. It was so awesome to be here with Catalia. If you're not watching her channel, tune in. I'm gonna put her link in the description below. But this has been an awesome time it's with really you been here. Awesome. It's it really has been. I'm not just saying that just for you know the sake of the video. It really was an awesome time to be here at Herbs Conroe. So again, I'm frozen. Anyway, Rattlers, hit that subscribe button, and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload, and leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite herp that you saw in this video from here at Herps Conroe was. And until the next adventure, love the planet. Feed your reptile obsession. And rattle on. on.